Hello everyone and welcome to Vitamin W Food for Thought. It's a monthly sisterhood session we do where we celebrate and learn from one of our sisters or two or three. We had sessions where we had three sisters. Today we have a session we have one sister, Ethne Trenor, all the way from Dubai, Irish, amazing woman. I will introduce you in a minute, Ethne. It's really nice to have you here. Um, so uh, yeah, something about vitamin W. Vitamin W is a global sisterhood, which is now in six countries around the world. It's in Luxembourg, London, Zurich, Croatia, the US and Dubai and growing. So I have already requests for Morocco. I have already requests for Egypt. I have already requests for Portugal. So it's growing. It's beautiful. We have around 60 to 100 women in each of these regions. It's vitamin W is about feeling confident with your sisters from other misters. It's really about sharing good knowledge, being there for one another, talking about work, talking about life, talking about family, talking about partners, talking about food, talking about drinks, talking about sex. We had all of that already in our, in our series of talks. We had a sexologist. We had someone who makes beer. We had someone um, who is a fashion designer. We had a consultant uh, teachers. We had an energy work specialist. And today we have someone who is a specialist in public speaking and the world renowned speaker, if I may say so. I have seen her in action and you know, she says she's a bit tired today, but her tired is me on a good day. So don't get mistaken. She is an absolute powerhouse. So let me introduce to you, Ethne. Trenor. She has shared a very, very nice bio with me, so I will read it because it's just an incredible bio and you need to know all about her. Also a disclaimer, so we will be filming these sessions from now on because it's the summer and as you can see a lot of sisters are not here today. Uh, I have received numerous messages for recording just because it's a holiday season. A lot of them have children or a lot of them are traveling for work. It's post-COVID so there's a lot of work happening and um, a lot of catching up happening and a lot of people have new jobs now. So because of that, we will be recording this and this will be on my YouTube channel, Tessie Anthony Nasa YouTube channel, where you can find all of these sessions. So back to Ethne. Ethne Trenor provides dynamic bespoke media and presentation trainings for business leaders, government officials and corporate executives executives. She is also a professional conference moderator and international communications consultant. Having worked as a financial TV reporter, she covers business and finance with expertise in energy as well as infrastructure, technology and corporate leadership. She is the founder and CEO of e Media based in, in Dubai, UAE, and she is building a community around Own the Space, her formula for better communication. As a former international broadcast journalist, her TV reporting experience spans major television networks, including ABC News, Sky News, BBC World, Bloomberg TV, and CNBC International. To meet client demand, her latest offering is moderator and webinar training to help people be more impactful when delivering content in the virtual world. Ethne has interviewed politicians dignitaries and high-ranking business people and has written and reported for television, radio and print publications. She is a graduate of Trinity College Dublin, Columbia College Chicago and has a postgraduate diploma in international relations from London School of Economics. Ethne, it's such a pleasure to have you here today. I am so excited. Give me one last minute just to tell the house rules. And um, for the people who are here now, and when I see people join, I will put them in the chat as well. Ethel will be speaking for 40 minutes about her amazing work and how we can learn something from it and use it in our everyday life and also for our work as executive females in our branches of work. You can interrupt her with questions. Please put them in the chat or raise your hand so Ethne can find your questions and answer them on the spot. This is an interactive class and um Ethne is really there for you here today very generously because she has the most busy schedule as we all do so thank you so much for coming please mute your mics if you don't speak to avoid any um interference and yeah that's it for me Ethne the stage is yours for the next 40 minutes it's seven it's 10 minutes past seven 
So until 10 minutes before eight, it's all yours. Bye for me for now. Jesse, thanks so much. And hello to everybody. It's great to be here. And I'm really delighted to be able to do this for you. Um, it's always, you know, it's always a buzz to be in touch with Tessie. So when she calls, you just sort of say yes, you know, so um, sorry, we had to change the date on it. So it's, um, but again, it's great to be here. So I do a lot of training in the media space, in the communication space. So I really hope I can add some value to all of you tonight. And again, I'd like this to be interactive. Um, there might be a million other questions that I haven't thought about something that you particularly are anxious about or something you want to know. So I'll do the presentation. If you want to actually just ask a question, by all means, I always say whoever shouts the loudest is the one that's heard, you know, so at, uh, you know, I'll, you know, maybe stop a few ways through and ask if anybody has a question and at least then we try maybe and have some answers in the end. So hopefully I haven't filled the 40 minutes with a presentation, I want to make sure we have a bit of time because I think we can add a bit of value to that. And a lot of what I do talk about, you're going to hear this own the space. This is kind of my big mantra when it comes to how people communicate, be it online, be it in public, be it one-on-one, -on -one, it doesn't matter. It's like once you have the floor, I always say you have a responsibility to own the space and to really you know, deliver value and you know, engagement and interest for everybody that's watching. So let me pull up the presentation. Let's hope this pulls together pretty quickly. Ah, it's done it again for me, it didn't. So give me just a second on this. Um, it's rather strange because yeah, here is my... Okay, so are you, are you seeing it full screen now? No, not yet. No, nope. now how did that happen? Gosh, okay, so let me see. This worked just fine a minute ago, Tessie, didn't it? So I'm like really, because I have it up full screen here. So I just need to pull it back down a bit. Then I need to come back onto you again. Okay, so now we see screen share. There it is, okay. We might do it, ladies, forgive me on this one, technology is not my number one. Are you seeing it now? Yes, works yeah. perfectly. All good. Super. Okay, um, just very quickly, uh, this is, yeah, I love this picture. This was me in action back in the day when I was a journalist. And, you know, as Tessie have said, I've worked at many of the major international journalist organizations. So I've listened to a lot of interviews. I've asked a lot of questions. I've heard of a lot of presentations. I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly out there. So hopefully what I'm gonna to do today is actually help you all a little bit. And I think one of the areas that people sometimes don't remember whether they're doing an interview, doing a presentation is about the audience. I mean, I think without a doubt, this is the number one thing you have to gear up for in terms of just getting started and thinking, you know, here's an audience and it doesn't matter where that audience is, but what do they want and what are you gonna be able to value with them. One thing I like to say, and this was taken from um, a colleague I worked with who uh, shared this with me, there's four areas where your audience is. You know, think about the audience. Some of them know and love you. Some of them don't know you, but maybe still love you. They're well-informed and, and friendly. Some people are not necessarily hostile, but they're, they're uninformed. They don't know what you want to talk about. And then sometimes are, you know, they're uninformed, but they're actually quite eager to hear what you're going to say. So you have to remember that you're actually going to make sure that you need to satisfy a lot of people there. Even though people say, yes, pick your ideal audience person, 
you can't really when you've got a big audience. You've got to make sure that there's a little bit in it for everybody. And also, I always say to people when they're talking and, you know, every now and then put it in the back of your mind and maybe put one on each shoulder, the little bird that while you're talking says, you know, so what? And then you say, the reason why this is so important and, um, you know, go to that place is because of X, Y, Z. And then it's like, who cares? And then tell people what the impact this is going to have. For the most part, everybody sitting in an audience is pretty much sitting there going, what's in it for me? Without a doubt. I mean, I think you've all been there. We've all been there where we've listened to, to boring presenters and thought, oh my God, who cares about this? You know, what difference is it going to make? And why am I listening? So make sure you don't do the same thing. Now, when we think about what an audience wants, I mean, they would love something new, something different. They like to hear what's, you know, the first, the best. They actually love a little bit of controversy. And even when I have panels and that, I often say to them, you know, please don't agree with each other, you know, come up with something that's a little bit different. I don't mind, you know, if you're not going to dis if you're not going to agree, don't start, you know, beating each other with the leg of the chair on my panel, but by all means have a healthy discussion and, you know, you don't necessarily have to agree. And the audience, they like to hear something new that they haven't heard before. This I think is also really, really important. But ultimately, they want to be engaged. They want some good content. Um, you know, they'd love some predictions as to what's going to happen. Um, forecasts or good new ideas, without a doubt. And I think they really want inspiration. You know how good it is when you leave an audience and you know, or when you leave a, a talk and you think, wow, that was really good. And you're, you're wired and there's something in it that you want to move forward and actually do something. Now, when it comes to public speaking, again, I talk very much about own the space. And I really believe there's only a few things you need to do to make sure that you own the space. You'll notice I'm not talking about own your space, because I would say that by the time you've been called on to give a speech, to do anything when it comes to public speaking, you know, you're there for a reason. You're the expert. You're somebody who knows what you're talking about. So therefore, first of all, you own your space. You're very confident in that. And then you just go ahead and own the wider space because that's who wants to hear from you. And again, you need to be looking at what you need to do to make sure that you do that. So a few things you need to do always, and I'm sure you know this, this is the very basics of any kind of public speaking, but believe me, I come across people who clearly have not thought it out. And sometimes you come across people who say, oh, I was going to give a speech, but I thought I'd speak from the heart. Now that works very well for some people, but there are other people it doesn't work well for. You know, so I always say, put a bit of effort into it in advance, know what it is you really wanna talk about. You don't have to speak from notes. You don't have to go uh, with a formal speech, but you really do need to focus on target on what you want because you don't want this to be all over the place. So this is my little chart here for own the space. It's like, it's where it all comes together. And to do that, you need to engage, inform, educate, and inspire. And if you can get all of your ideas and literally break them up into these four parts, they're not equal by any means. And we'll talk a little bit more about them, but you have the makings of just a wonderful public speech at any time of day. And even if you're talking to your boss, if you're talking to anybody else, you put these four elements together and put them in this order, engage, inform, educate, inspire, they're very, very powerful. I can promise you that. I want you to take a look at this video. And this really uses the concept of engage, inform, educate, and inspire. It's just a couple of minutes. Let me just play it with you. I'll put it in perspective for you. It is Jamie Oliver, I'm sure many of you know, um, uh, once mega restauranter, cookbook. You, you've all come across him. But he also is on a mission to make sure that people eat better and have healthier lives. So this was when he talked in America, and I've edited it down a bit, but I just want to show you where his speech engages, informs, educates, and inspires. And indeed, it's very, very powerful indeed. I didn't bring too much video because I don't want to take too much time, but let's have a look at this. In the next 18 minutes when I do our chat, four Americans that are alive will be dead through the food that they eat. For the last seven years, I've worked fairly tirelessly to uh, save lives in my own world. I'm not a doctor. 
I'm a chef. I don't have expensive equipment or medicine. I use information education. I profoundly believe that the power of food has a primal place in our homes that binds us to the best bits of life. America, you're at the top of your game. This is one of the most unhealthy countries in the world. The statistics of bad health are clear, very clear. We spend our lives being paranoid about death, murder, homicide, you name it, it's on the front page of every paper, CNN. Look at homicide at the bottom, for God's sake. Every single one of those ones in the red is a diet-related disease. Any doctor, any specialist will tell you that. Fact. Diet-related disease is the biggest killer in the United States right now, here today. Let me just show you. We've got one kid here having, you know, eight tablespoons of sugar a day. You know, there's your week. There's your month. And I've took the liberty of putting in just the five years of elementary school sugar just from milk. Look, if we do all this stuff, and we can, it's so achievable. You can care and be commercial, absolutely. Most importantly, it's about trying to get people to realise that every one of your individual efforts makes a difference. And I believe truly, actually, that if change can be made in this country, beautiful things will happen around the world. My wish is for you to help a strong, sustainable movement to educate every child about food, to inspire families to cook again, and to empower people everywhere to fight obesity. Now, you'll see a lot of examples of Engage, Inform, Educate, Inspire. You'll see it in TED Talks. You'll see it in many ways. And, you know, it's, it's an easy formula um, and it's worth watching that TED talk actually, it's really good. We've just edited down a lot of it. It is about 20 minutes long, uh, but look at it and just think the way that he's done it, he comes out with a big statement first that catches people's attention and then goes on to inform that what he's doing, he's on a mission to change people's you know, diets and way of living. And then he, they educate. Now for him there, you know, he showed statistics, but he also demonstrated with that big barrel full of sugar, making it really clear to people what's going on. And then he closed it off, you know, with a big inspire and a call to action for people. And again, you know, one of the key things he did here, he kept it very simple. That's something else I think that's really important. And once I, I talked to a public relations manager who, who said, you need to do some work with my CEO, you know, it really bothers us when he sort of stumbles on big words in his delivery at conferences and that, to which I said, you know, don't worry about, you know, him stumbling on it, whoever's writing the big words, that's the person that needs uh, a bit more help, um, to which she said it was her, so it was a little embarrassing, but, you know, I always say it's um, not about dumbing down what you do, but think about it, when have we ever addressed an audience right now in the last perhaps 10 years that have had English as their first language? Probably never, and we'll never do it again. You know, the world is multinational, there's people from all over the world. So keep your language simple because you don't want somebody to misunderstand what you say. And look at it, if it was an investor conference, there's an area where you want to keep things really, really clear, you know, because the person with the few billion dollars you need for investment at the back of the room might not be from your country, might, might love what you do, but then couldn't understand what you talked about. So make sure you keep it very simple. Also, you know, make sure, as I said, you plan it a bit. Plan it a little bit more than perhaps you would. Sometimes, as I say, what's over rehearsed is often, you know, the best that comes across not. My young niece who works in banking was doing a big presentation once and she had worked for weeks on her big PowerPoint presentation. And, you know, she was a bit nervous about it, but she had everything in order and she'd really rehearsed it. And then on the day, she actually decided not to, to use the PowerPoint in the end. And she said, oh, and I just, you know, went and kind of, you know, I just decided I'd wing it a bit. And I'm like, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, you didn't, you didn't wing it. You knew it so well. Um, just because you didn't have your PowerPoint, you've been working on it for the last couple of weeks. So you knew exactly what you were doing. You had your plan. You could visualize what it was. 
And that's what's really, really important. So make sure you put the effort in. And again, thinking about what's your message. I have Please go ahead. Do you want to ask a question? I have questions for you, yes. So um, Shelly James says, what if your panel is nervous about being exposed by saying something controversial? Then we have Rudy who says, seconding, seconding uh, the question, have noticed it since I started working for a Swiss organization, not just the speakers, but also the audience seems to want to keep things neutral and diplomatic. Controversy or extreme views seem to be avoided. Shelley replies, and something that can be a problem in the levels of information, awareness in a larger audience. What do you think, Ethel? Well, you have to be ready if you're going to be controversial to, to say something without a doubt. You know, the audience likes it. Um, it doesn't always work. It can backfire. And there was an example, and I think you can pick it up very easily from HSBC just a couple of months ago, whereby their head of... Um, ESG, basically, I think it was, did a very contrarian um, presentation, you know, about the issues and, and, and not quite saying that climate change didn't matter, but talking about, you know, environment, social and governance. Um, and it certainly wasn't the, the message of the, the bank, without a doubt, because what was funny was I had the CEO on a panel the same day as he decided to do this very contrarian talk for the Financial Times, so it was also public. It's worth listening to because when you listen to it, you're, you are very shocked. And I think what he said is a lot of what people do talk about and just the effort and energy that's going into this and the cost and what are we getting out of it. But you know, I do think he could have said it in a less alarming way. And again, for him, there were tough consequences. I'm not sure if he lost his job, but he was certainly suspended on the day. Um, you know, so it's it's a choice you make, and yes, it's a it's it's a tough one. Um, but but a lot of companies, you're right, will will err on the side of just you know saying something that adds some value, but stays away from controversy. So I think it's good when we come across something that it makes people think. But if you're an independent player, you can get away with that. If you're a member of a particularly a listed company, um, and you have shareholders, and you have lots of other people to who are looking. You're not going to get away with it very much. If any of you are familiar with um, the CEO of Ryanair, you know, he says a lot of things that maybe, you know, are a little controversial, but, you know, he's, he runs a, a company that makes a lot of money. He pretty much has himself to account to. I think his shareholders are on board and they, they like the way he runs it. He's always, he's built an incredible business. And um, there's not few who could get away with the way I think he delivers. And a lot of what he does too is to get a lot of attention. Believe me, that's, uh, I've interviewed him a few times. But um, it's, it's a tough one. But again, it comes a very, very personal decision. So I, I don't have an answer on that one for you because it really is, you have to decide how controversial can I be? What are the consequences for me personally? What are the consequences for the company? And perhaps what are the consequences for a group of people around me. So it's, it's a tough choice to make, but it's going to be a very personal choice. And, you know, do it with, with good conscience or do it at your pro, but really, really think about it. And I think it's not something you just decide on the spot. Let me try if this might work and see what people's reaction to it could be, because it, it might backfire. And you don't want that. I mean, no speech, no public speaking engagement is worth ruining your career over. Um, so do do think about what it is you want to say. And it's true, a lot of what we're listening to is, is a bit bland, it's neutral, but I do think there are always some, you know, the, the good speakers in there, and there's one at least at every conference, you know, will actually bring us something a little more valuable and something a little bit more inspiring. So that's what I think you have to work on and really see where you can add that value rather than going the controversial angle if you don't think it's going to work for you, but it, it might. So I hope that uh, we, we can talk more about it um, as we go through. What's your key message? Again, you know, don't overpower what you want to talk about. Pick one area you want to talk about. You don't need to build in the history of your company or what's happening around the rest of the world because people's attention span is really, really short. And, you know, I'm reading a book at the moment, Daniel Goldman, I think is the author, a journalist, and he's writing about this and it has got shorter over the years. In fact, 
a couple of years ago, uh, there was a something that it had gone from 12 seconds down to nine and people possibly saying down to seven at the moment. So I better keep it up here and keep your attention span going here. But I know it's, it's short and it's uh, scientifically proven that it is short. So we really need to keep that engagement. Um, many ways that you can make things interesting in what you're talking about. And there's little tricks within how you design, how you actually deliver and what you talk about. The power of three is very, very important. And this has been important, you know, since public speaking, um, you know, since the time of Julius Caesar. Think about it. I came, I saw, I conquered. We all know that. Think about how we look at things in threes. You know, it's like ABC, the sort of one, two, three, or even a countdown that you'll get, you know, for television that might be three, two, one. Um, very, very powerful in terms of how you put your messaging out there. And let's have a look at it's this little one. video. It's not just for me. It is for those forgotten children who want education. It is for those frightened children who want peace. It is for those voiceless children who want change. As far as I know, I'm just a committed and even stubborn person who wants to see every child getting quality education, who wants to see women having equal rights, and who wants peace in every corner of the world. So there's lots of little tricks like that. And even from a speech at the World Economic Forum, um, Princess Rania of Jordan talked about education and she did a big keynote about that. And again, she came back with these three things, you know, our children deserve it, our young people demand it, and our region depends on it. And there's almost a little bit of rhythm there. You know, the first two are a little shorter and the third one has a little bit of, a bit more of a melody to it. So delivering that, I think again, when you think about how people take in information, the one, two, three is an easy thing to do. When you've been invited to do any kind of a speech or be a member of a panel or anything like that, you know, check out the timing. It's amazing the amount of people that run over time still. And this is in respect to, you know, your other speakers as well, people need to get. And again, it depends. I mean, I moderate a lot of conferences and I can tell you I'm a very democratic moderator when it comes to actually giving people time. Um, there was a conference I couldn't do recently and somebody who was because I was out with the dreaded, the dreaded COVID, but a colleague called me afterwards and one of the senior people on the panel, she just said she was outraged because their CEO only got one question. Um, I mean, I had a lot of prep done on this for them. I don't know how they ended up giving somebody one question, but they obviously let people talk too much on a panel. Um, on an hour long panel, you know, everybody should have at least about three questions. So if you're on a panel, work with your moderator in advance. If they don't call you in advance, you call them. Um, I always insist on talking to my panel members before we do it. And I know that that for me gives our delivery a lot more of a conversational, you know, it, it has a bit more of a, it, it has a direction, I think, rather than there have been the odd time where people are like, no, you can't talk to your panel members. Um, it's, uh, they're not available or whatever. And then we show up and it's, it's a tough panel. So it makes a huge difference if you take the time. So, and, and people are often surprised that I do put so much time in it because they're like, other people don't do it. And you're like, well, that's why they do a different panel than I do. But so I always tell people, if they're not contacted, you make that contact. And again, make sure how's the event been organized? Who are the other speakers? You know, are you making the opening remarks? Look at the time limit. All of that stuff is vitally important because other people will be very gracious to you if you sort of obey the few rules that are there. There's plenty you can say. You know, you talk, you get a lot of words in per minute. So don't worry about it. You can get a lot in in five, 10 minutes without a doubt. Now, sometimes, I mean, yeah, I, I talk about this a lot because I think it comes into the concept of engaging and people are like, what to wear? And uh, the dress codes have been hugely relaxed. I was at a conference recently and a CEO decided that he was going to be a little bit more relaxed because it was an internal conference with all of his key managers. Most of them are German. So you can imagine their idea of dressing down was take their tie off. He decided that he'd just go a little bit further and wore some crazy purple and uh, orange sneakers, which you're just thinking they didn't work. 
you know, so don't overdo it. Think about what is it you want to wear and think about, you know, what it represents for you and what messages it gives away. Um, when you're doing a lot of online stuff, which you will be occasionally, I think this is still something that's with us. You know, I say error on just some bold colors. Checks online still don't do a great job. This is what this is what a check shirt can look like online. It doesn't really work very well. So just be careful what it is. When you're on a panel too, you know, make sure, check your socks, various things like that. It makes a big difference. If you're wearing silly socks for all the gentlemen you might know out there, remind them all they are, are silly socks. And that's what the audience sees. And that's what they look at and talk about. And yes, I do realize in the, the bottom corner on this here, we have the prime, former prime minister of Ireland and the prime minister of Canada, both of them happily showing their silly socks. I've had this conversation with some of the younger people who say, yeah, these guys are really cool. Um, and I asked them if they know anything about their policies. And that's where they say, no, but he's a pretty cool guy and he always wears funny socks. And you're going, okay, you get what uh, works for you. Ladies, I always say, please be careful when you're on the air, particularly if you're sitting in a panel and you're up high, because most stages are higher. So just watch how low your top is and how high your skirt is, I say, at all times. It, it does make a difference. And who else is on the panel with you? Um, it makes a big difference. So just take this into consideration. You know, you can wear your little black party dress later in the evening. There will be a party, but maybe it's not the place to wear it on stage. So just be careful. Um, a lot of people wear dark glasses these days. It is the style. I'm not a big fan, and I'm not a big fan of this particularly online because I think it creates, you know, a bit of a, a barrier almost. It frames your face in one way. But that's maybe an old television hack of mine that I like, and the glasses I have, if I do wear them, are just rimless. But again, you know, a lot of people have their, it's, it's very much their own choice. And I was watching something the other day and some guy had these big blue glasses to which, you know, I put that on, I used it for something else. We came like, what's the first thing you notice in this? And everyone was like, his glasses. So it just can be a bit distracting. And again, they're stylish, they're fashionable, but wear them perhaps in another area where you're not going to distract from what you've got. Um, something that, uh, you know, we're looking at these days and you might wonder why I brought up something like this. When you're drinking um, on set, uh, the worst thing you want is a plastic bottle. So many of us are talking about sustainability and you know various other things. And I am constantly seeing plastic bottles at conferences still. I can't believe it. Um, so if, if that's the case, and if you're there in time, uh, you can actually just go up and find out where you're sitting and say, you know, pour your own water and have it ready there. And long glasses tend to, to go up to your nose. There's no way out of it. You know, so your best glass is a short one and you sip from it. Um, there's a, it makes a bit of sense and it makes a bit of difference. Ladies, um, you know, on air and doing a conference, you know, wear some makeup. You need a little bit of makeup up there. The lights, if you're doing an interview, the lights, if you're at a big conference, they're very, very bright. So just make sure that you just put a bit of makeup on, sometimes too, just to dampen uh, the, the natural oils in your skin, particularly when the lights are really bright. And the same for guys, you'll see at some of the big conferences, you know, the makeup artist will actually put just a little powder on the men too, just to make sure that they're not looking, um, they're, they, they don't glare under the lights. It's very, very important. So think about your audience. I mean, this is what I always say as well. You know, what purpose does your audience serve and what purpose do you serve for them? You know, it can be a two-way street here. You can deliver some powerful messages to your audience, but you can also ask something of them. So it's very important. What is the information that they're going to be looking for? What do they need to hear? What do you think that's going to add value to what they can do? Where's they off? What, what, what can make things better? How can you make their lives more interesting, different by what it is that you're going to say? And very, very clearly make sure you're, uh, focused and you know what it is your message is not just delivering a speech about the state of the union so to speak but there is a specific message there and it's important and don't be afraid to do a call for action people are there they're willing to listen to you they want to hear what you're saying you know uh, why not say to them you know maybe if uh, or something that inspires them that they can take action and do something that's going to make a big difference as well Always be prepared for questions, I say, when you go to many events. So often people have 
they're text prepared, but they're not prepared for a Q&A. And this comes down to, to you know, you mentioned earlier about the controversy, because this is where people in the audience or possibly a reporter that might be there could put you on the spot and could ask you a bit of a controversial question. And you have to be, you know, very firm and very straight in terms of, you know, being able to answer it. And if you don't want to answer it, also been very straight about not doing that. Again, I think we all have enough language to talk around the topic. You don't want to say, I don't want to talk about that. But if it comes to something, let's say, in terms of the, the general economy at the moment and how we're heading into a recession and things are going to be terrible for your business, you don't have to address the bit about being terrible for your business. You can address the fact you know, that you have been in business and economies are cyclical and this is what happens. And in the last... 10 years since you've been in business, you know, you've weathered the storm, you're prepared for this, you're working towards it, and what you, your plan you have in place is going to get you there. So just be, be a little more prepared and think about it. And also, if there are the tough questions that might come, think about them in, in, that, in advance, because you don't want to be the rabbits in the headlight when somebody asks you a question. So be ready for that. Again, I come down to really keep thinking of these four areas. Engage, inform, educate, inspire to own the space. And it gives you this lovely little uh, uh, little mantra we all know, E-I-E-I-O, you know, you'll be singing that by the end of it, it'll be on your mind. Um, and it's a nice way just to remember what it is you've got to talk about. Now, when you're doing a big conference, I always say when you put it in engage, and I'm sure you've seen it, I've seen it many, many times, whereby people tend to read the opening part. So if you're just doing, if you have to do a formal conference, you know, your excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, blah, 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 welcome to the fourth annual whatever conference you've been working on diligently for the last couple of years. Do your best to work on that before you show up and make sure you can at least do that big welcome, looking at the audience, you know, looking down to your excellency, distinguished guests, ambassadors, whatever it is, and give that warm welcome and give that engagement there. It's very, very important. Particularly if it's in a formal setting, that's how you do it. If it's something like just what we saw with the Jamie Oliver thing, fine, come out with a statement that says um, something that, yes, can be, it can be inspiring, it can be shocking, it can be a sort of statement of this is where we are now. This is what's wrong, this is what's happening, but come back to the fact that you know, what you're going to do can change it. Also make sure you deliver what it is. Inform is very, very important. Um, let people know what it is you're gonna talk about because very often I hear great conversations and I think, what, what is this guy talking about? What is he doing? What is she doing? What is it all about? You hear great talk around it, but I'm, I'm missing the key point here and perhaps refer back to it another time. Educate is so important because this is where I often say, people don't always want to be the first. In many areas, yes, they do. But um, you know, we're building a hyperloop here in the region. And I really don't want to be the first to be in the, the test capsule. I'd rather go in that maybe when everybody comes out and says, it works well, it's got all of this. It's probably no different than the tube in England, which I'm very happy to go into. But the new hyperloop, just I, I'm just not ready to be the first person on it. So you know, educate people in terms of this is a product that's been tested, that other people have. People like to know that. They like to know a little bit more background. They like to, you know, that concept of education that even in the video there we're showing the fact that it's like this amount of sugar is, you know, what kids are eating. So make sure you do that education bit. And then inspire. You know, there's always a, a point whereby you can add value to your audience. Leave them with something that's really inspiring. Leave them with hope. Leave them that if the fact that you're talking about education or something like that, come back to the end, you know, and say that what they can do in terms of every step can do this. So we have done X, Y, Z, and now what we need to do is move it to the next step to actually achieve what we all want to do. It's really, really important. Coming back again, just a reminder for you, engage, inform, educate, inspire, own that space. It's, it's there for the taking. So and you know you deserve to own it and people want you to own it. So it's very important. See, it's simple. That's what I, I always say. Um, when we think more about owning that space, you know, it comes down, I think, to 
what I have said without it, I'll maybe go into this a little bit more in terms of, you know, your voice. Make sure you project your voice and work on it. Some people have a lighter voice, you know, it's the, and always, I think, you know, remember, it's the only voice you have. You're completely in control of everything you do here. Let me stay with the voice for a minute, because some people say to me, oh, I hate the sound of my own voice. Then you can change it. You know, you're not going to change it drastically, but you can certainly actually change it. And I know I was just watching recently, um, I, for some reason, don't ask me why, the old film about Margaret Thatcher. And she also had talked about when she went into politics first, that she got feedback because, you know, her voice just sounded a little, a little light and a little, you know, a little high. And uh, believe me, when you sort of look at her closing days, her voice was anything but light and high. So people do take this seriously and you can work on it. Sometimes all you need to do is slow it down. Sometimes you add more volume, sometimes you speed it up. But always remember, you know, that you're the one that's very much in control in terms of what you're talking and what you want to talk about. So take the time to do that. Your conclusion, I think, is very, very important. It can be what's very nice sometimes is related to the opening of what you did. That engagement that you put out there, the situation that perhaps is now and may not be um, very, very optimistic at one point, you can, by the end of your talk, brought it around to say, yes, this is where we might be now, but when we do A, B, and C, this is where we're heading, and this is where we're going, and this is where we can do it together. So bring everybody back there um, and bring, bring them with you on this, because this is where, you know, you see, that's where the speeches, the, the engagements that people, you know, give the standing ovations for and are like, they're inspired. They're the ones who want to, to go with you. Um, ultimately, again, it you know, comes back to that. Make that opening very engaging. Deliver a very, very clear message. Don't mix that message. People can't take too many. So decide what you want to talk about in there you know, and really add value you know, and inspire your audience. Ultimately, this is what's going to help you own the space. So that's where I leave it here on the presentation. So I'm really happy now to um, have a chat and see where we can I can add maybe more value to any of you. Thank you so, so much, Ahmed. That was so interesting. I have learned so much and I am a public speaker as you are since a long time. So thank you so much, especially also with the attire and everything, because there's always things we don't always pay too much attention to. And, you know, so there's definitely a hint or two I took away. So um, opening up the floor to anyone here who wants to ask some questions, please unmute yourself, say who you are, what you do, uh, where you're from, and your question. Hello, I'm Heidi from Zurich. I've worked in communications for 20 years, and um, so I loved your presentation. Thank you so much. Um, what are your tips for the last five or 10 minutes before you go on stage? What are things that you feel have worked for you? I know everyone's slightly different and um, everyone has an individual approach to um, addressing that slight nervousness that might come. But what is your personal experience and tip? Well, nervousness, first of all, will come and it's always good. I think the, the energy that nervous energy can bring, um, and I think when we look at the fact that we're a little bit nervous and it's bad, that's when we just become a little bit more nervous, unfortunately. So I think, first of all, it happens to everybody. Believe me, it happens to me. It happens to everybody. And I think it's about channeling that energy into something really good. Many people have breathing techniques that just are sort of calm back there. You know, you can sort of do deep breathing. You can do you know, sort of box breathing, sort of breathe, hold it, release very slowly. That's without a doubt, you know, can help. Um, me, I'm probably more energized, but I do like to be, I like to be alone. It's not a time that I really want okay. to be talking to people, you mm -hmm. know. Um, that's a time where I'm, I've pretty much got what I want to do. You know, I'm there, I'm kind of thinking, okay, I got to be this, this, this. Um, you're kind of just going through it in your head. Um, without a doubt, you know, make sure that if you're the first panel speaker in the morning that you have actually, you know, opened up your voice in advance. And, you know, even if you have time to maybe 
take a, a quick run away a few minutes before, run to the ladies' room, sing a little song for yourself, you know. Um, I don't know, shout at the dog if you're going to be online in five minutes, but make sure your voice is going. Um, if you're if you're online doing it this the first thing in the morning, and let's say you're on your own, it's the first time you're talking, therefore, you know, literally just make sure you open up your voice in the morning and just mm -hmm. get it moving. Um, if you are doing something online too, you know, just as comfort to you, if you have to remember numbers and various things, just stick them up around your room. Um, it's very reassuring rather than be thinking, oh, where's your number? And you just think it's right there in front of you. And also, you know, the people's name um, right in front of you, the way you can just sort of kind of quickly glance up and come back right down. Um, but there's different things. And again, you have to find what works for you. When it's a panel discussion, I my least favorite time to talk to the panel is before we go on. And that's partly also why I insist on talking to the panel in advance, mm -hmm. because everybody's kind of a bit nervous, you know. And I do remember last year at one of the big conferences, I was actually doing panels back to back. So I had to move from one building to another. And all of my panel were all ready. They'd all got their mics. I had spoken to every one of them, but they still assumed we might have a little bit of a meeting in advance. And I, I thought we'd be there earlier. And literally there were three minutes to go. And the organizer was telling me how, you know, they were getting a little panicked. And she said, don't worry, Ethel, be here. Don't worry about it. And literally I got my headset on and we went. And afterwards they were saying, oh my God, that went so well. We were really nervous when you weren't here in the beginning. And we thought maybe we should talk things through. And I said, look, we had talked about everything. You know, yeah. we pretty much knew where yeah. we were going. I went through with you what we were going to talk about. You know, we kind of had it. You all knew the first question, not necessarily word for word, but you knew what yeah. I was going to ask you about. So you were comfortable. Um, you know, I had primed you all to make sure that I would come back and give you all a minute wrap up. So I knew you were ready for that. And then we had questions in between. So we, we, were, we were ready to go. I don't need to sit and talk to you, you know, for an hour. And for me, I, I do actually love to just sort of come in, say hello to my people. If there's anything they want to talk to me about, great. But I don't like to have the group meeting go, okay, are we all happy about that? Because I know they're happy. I've talked to them in advance. I'm really happy. I'm aligned. Um, and uh, it, it's sense. And also, yeah. It, yeah. So again, play with what you think works because there are no great rules, but definitely even still doing a bit of breathing. Um, don't drink milk. Not many people are going to drink milk, but uh, in the Netherlands, they tend to sort of have milk available as one of the drink options in advance. Um, water, black coffee is your friend. And don't eat before you go on. That's another thing. If you if you are going to eat, you know, just eat some protein or something like that. I mean, at lunchtime, let's say I'm coming back after lunch. I literally might go to lunch. I'll have a piece of protein. That's it. I'm not going to have anything else. I just need to keep that energy. And, and then mentally get, gear your head up, you know, that, you know, you, you own the space and you're ready for this. And that bit of nervousness is kind of what's really going to keep your excitement level up and keep your energy up. Yeah. Great, thank you for sharing this. Wonderful. Any other questions? Did we look at the ones in the chat? I, I, had, I, had, I had one question. I guess I'm, I'm a sort of, a, I'm, my name's Shelley, uh, Dr. Shelley James. I'm speaking from the UK. And I'm a specialist in light and well-being. I work with organizations around the world to help them to use light for in, in healthcare settings, in education settings. And I've started to do I did a TED talk, which went really well. And I've started to do some public speaking and I and I, I love it. And I just wondered if you had any tips for finding stages, because I'm passionate about the topic um, and I'm starting to enjoy doing that kind of thing. I wondered if you had any tips for and somebody to, to kind of find their way into that world. Thank you. Well, I think a lot of organizations now are doing internal conferences and they're always looking for something a little bit different. Um, you know, I tend to work in very much the, the structured, you know, big conference setup in terms of doing, you know, energy, um, economy, various things like that. So, uh, it, it, it's very organized and straightforward. 
And your space is, is different. It's very beautiful and it's very, very important. But I am beginning to see that a lot of people are beginning to, to look. I did a conference recently in Saudi Arabia that was talking about the detrimental impact on, it was about digital health. And it was a very different conference for me to do. Um, but even in that space, how people need to, you know, turn off from all of the digital stuff that's around us and take the time. Um, I mean, I can I can share the that what that conference was, and you know, and maybe that's another way to frame what you were doing as well, because that is taking up so many people's time, and people actually almost need to see, oh gosh, yeah, there's a reason why we'd like to have to talk to somebody like you because it is about maybe withdrawing and you know being more uh, insular and taking that time to be calm and being away from all of what impacts us every day. That was so I'll, I'll share that, that, that conference with you. It's just an idea, um, but this, it's, it's about maybe looking in that space, but I think also offering to companies that, that, that way to frame it, you have to, uh, of what we all do, I think, you know, it's, it's thinking, what advantage would this be to people in the workplace? Um, I have a, a friend who, you know, does family therapy. And again, as I said to her, you know, if you want to pitch that on a business level, then you pitch it. And it was a good time to pitch it during COVID when everybody's at home and the need for family harmony. Um, and it suddenly became sort of an element of, you know, a business story rather than a very, very private, you know, family therapy, because now it was something that maybe people all needed to look at and make sure that everybody was happy in that setting a new environment. That's really useful. Thank you. Yeah, it, it is. I have been starting to sort of angle the story to those different settings. It's really encouraging to hear that that's that that's a good way to approach it. So thank you very much indeed. I have a question as well, but if anyone else has a question, because we need to wrap it up. Um, so if anyone else has a question, I will skip mine. So um, my question is, um, you know, as a public speaker, and it, it, I have seen it many times with fellow colleagues that you get asked a question and sadly people were not prepared or it was just a really random question. What are some of the phrases you would use to get them out of the pit, right? Where they really are like blank, no clue what they're gonna answer to that. And you can really see them being extremely uncomfortable, stuttering, um, just, you know, looking around, being a bit confused. And, you know, what, what are some phrases you would say that a smooth, smooth transition, which, you know, kind of like, or maybe just change of topic, something to kind of like divert the attention on what is actually happening there? Now, there's a lot of phrases that are out there in the public relations books. And there's a lot of phrases that even my competitors would say you should use. Um, things like, now that's an interesting question, but blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, never, never, never. That's not what, that'll never work. I mean, people hate it. It's so old fashioned. It's been rolled out another time. You know, what I say to people is really listen to the question. Well, first of all, that's why I say really think about what questions could come up, but also listen to the language that's in the question. And that's where you can begin to turn around. And that example that I gave you about, you know, when we look at your business, yes, but we look at the economy and there's a recession on the way. So therefore this is going to be, you know, really tough time for your business. It's probably going to fail. I mean, that's a question a journalist or somebody could throw out. And you're like, uh, uh, uh. you know, so again, pick up on the words business, pick up on the words economy, and you get, you learn these little tricks of going, oh, wait a minute, what are they talking about here? There's other bits on that. So cherry pick the positive words that you want out of what they say. Um, and, you know, just say, you know, and as a business, of course, I'm very concerned about the economy and I watch what's happening, you know, but we've been in business X amount of years here, but we have in place is a business that does A, B, and C. And the demand for this will always be there. And what we're looking at is to the long term, you know, and, and that's why I always say to people to learn a little bit more about what's going on outside your space. Because if you look at things like the economy, there's analysts out there that say this is going to be a short, sharp recession. There's analysts out there that say we're not going to have one. Um, 
you know, so it's about, and they say it's not going to be nothing like the other one, the last one. So having that little bit of knowledge to turns it around for you to be able to say, you know, but, you know, when we look at what, you know, HSBC has recently said in its report on the recession, they've actually analyzed that, that, that it's not going to be as bad as it looks. And people are like, oh, okay. And then you turn it around. But our business is strong. It does this. And this is where we're heading and we're intending to stay for it because we're in it for the long run or something like that. But I, I really think there's always, and we all have enough, you know, use of the English language to be able to pick something rather than uh, the old hacked ones that, I mean, I really say, don't go down there. Don't say that's an interesting question. Don't say um, that's not really my area of expertise, which, you know, you can say in the second half, let's say somebody talks to you about nuclear physics or something, um, you know, or, or maybe, I don't know what it is, they say something about, you know, will nuclear energy help what we're doing? And you really know nothing about nuclear. You can say, well, many countries around the world are finding the solution in nuclear. Now, that's not my area of expertise, but what I see will work is a bit of this, this, and this. So you can always say something about what they say and then flip it onto, bridge it onto what you want to talk about and go down that route. And again, bring it back to you always. You know, what's working for us, what we're doing in our company. So just think, listen to the question, do that, and then bring it back to you. Okay, thank you so much, Ethne. Um, Shelly needs to go. She says uh, they're, they're closing the building. So thank you. Go, they're go. closing the building. Yeah, they're go. kind of chucking me out. The security guard's been around rattling his key, so I need to go. So that was. You don't wonderful. want to get locked in. Lovely to meet you, Shelly, and to everybody thank else. You. Thank you. Well, also for everyone else here, thank you so much, Ethne, for everything. Um, okay. Big ten on me when I see you um, to thank you, as always. And yes, to everyone else, please. Um, get in touch if you have more questions for Ethne. Um, there will be, this recording will be available on YouTube probably tonight, if not tomorrow morning, the latest. I will share it on all of the Vitamin W uh, WhatsApp chats, all six of them. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for our next month's session. I have a few propositions, so I'm not yet, yeah, I don't know yet which one I should take. So I'm doing the schedule now for the next four months. So the next Food for Thought sessions and uh, yeah, if you have any ideas, if you know some cool people, cool topics as well, please do let me know. I'm always happy to hear and learn new things. So Ethne, my darling, thank you so, so much. Thank you all for coming. And I wish you all a really beautiful rest of the evening. One quick thing. I have um, two little eBooks. If anybody is interested, I'm very happy to share them. I'll send them tomorrow if they're of any okay. use. One on moderation online and one just more general one. So. Please, fantastic! Yes. I'd love to have them. Thank you. Yes, I share them on the chats. Can I also put them below the YouTube video for people to access? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me yeah? Okay. If, if you can, whatever way you can do it. Sure. Perfect. Perfect. Great well, to see you all. Bye bye. You. Happy summer. Bye. Stay cool. Stay cool in Europe. <laughs> the same. You too in Dubai. Bye. Bye bye.